Hello, hello. What's up, Chris? Good. Welcome to Boston. Thank you very much, man. Welcome Appreciate to it. the headquarters. Good keen to have a look. Yeah. yeah. So before you uh, before you start your tour, you gotta wear it. Gotta wear the uniform. Fair. Gotta wear the uniform. Done deal. How do I look? Very nice. Okay. Look good. In, you look good in sparks. I love the entrance, man. It looks um, so this is our headquarters. We're in we're in Acton, Massachusetts, which mm -hmm. is about thirty miles outside of Boston. This is where the entire Sparks team works. We have a few remote people, but we've we've done a good job here at Sparks and kind of keeping the team together all through COVID and everything. So we're mostly a in office team. Okay. Um, this is our our lobby. So out here we have our products from the consumer machine all the way up to our commercial machines. That's a beast. Yeah. That that so this setup uh, actually was originally built for Dick Sporting Goods here in the United States. Um, this shows you, we call it like the dual stack setup, and some of our higher volume customers even have th three dual stacks. So they'll have six sharpeners in one facility. That's cool, man. And this is our uh, fixture that we use in our retail partners. This is in about 60 to 70 retailers now uh, in North America. So this is, you can purchase grinding rings, all the accessories and the sharpeners on this. Fantastic. Uh, so welcome to the office. So we have uh, human resources is out here. Um, we're at about, about 20,000 square feet um, is our facility. And we are, we're divided up. This is, this is the, what we call the front office. Mm -hmm. uh, and we'll get to the warehouse and production in a second. But the first thing that you encounter when you come in is our patent wall. Um, since the day we started, I, I came from medical devices where innovation and protecting innovation is really important. And so we actually now have about uh, two dozen patents pending and issued. Yeah. Um, and you can see here all of the issued patents that are covering, you know, even some of the early concepts, alignment, our jaw system, our grinding rings. Um, and now we actually are doing a lot of patent work around all the new innovations that we'll we'll be talking about here on your visit. That's pretty cool. Before we can't like just neglect that. We can't. Oh yeah. We can't. What this is that? So this uh, this is how we move. We do a lot of outings and stuff here at Sparks, and this is this is actually how we move beverages around when we're at our outings. So this is a this is a cooler chest. That's a that's got lights on the front of it and yeah. speakers. And it happens to be a Zamboni. That's epic. I like that. That's about as hockey as it gets. Yeah. Yeah. What's the first area over here? So the the first area is a lot of the customer facing parts of our business. So we have sales mm -hmm. are here and customer service. Um, customer service, whenever you call into Sparks, if you have a problem with your machine or if you have a question about purchasing something, it's actually this team of people. Yeah. So John, Joey, uh, Brian, who's on the other side of this wall, this is the, the core of the customer service team. Um, questions answered here by people at Sparks, by hockey players, people that understand the products. That's always been an important sort of tenet of Sparks was, you know, we just deliver and it, you know, we, it's a promise we make to our customers. We'll always be there for customer service. So it's this team in this building. It's cool to see. It'll always be that way. And it's like, cause you just assume, cause when you're, especially I live in England, so you can't see the operation behind Sparks and you assume a lot of this stuff is outsourced. In my mind, you guys have an office, you have a warehouse and just everything's handled by other people. Yeah. But it's when you come here and you look around, you're like, there is a lot of bodies here yeah. and everyone has like a specific role and it's, it's epic yeah. to see that it's all kept in here, like in, in it's Massachusetts. So, it's so important. It's, it's what differentiates us as a company. For sure. Also over here is sales. Okay. So because we have a lot of customers that are NHL teams, AHL teams, NCAA teams, and then all of our commercial customers, yeah. uh, the, the rinks and the retailers that are actually using Sparks, this team internally, which is in the same area, handle all of those uh, relationships, uh, conversations with the customers as they expand, as they grow, this team supports them. That's happening. We also have some finance mm -hmm. uh, on this side of the, of the office as well. Got you, got you. So as we leave our patent wall, and that area, we come down and we're now starting to get into uh, some marketing folks mm -hmm. and engineering quality um, and purchasing and supply chain. So as we've grown, that part of our business is really important. Like where do we get our products? How do we get our products? What, managing the relationships with the suppliers. That's a huge part of this business is yeah. making sure like when our customers want something, we can actually deliver it and managing the supply chain is super important. Um, you'll also see it's actually been, this is sort of a big push that I've had along the way is like celebrating all the milestones with the team and putting and sharing those. And so 
you can see on these walls like some of the memorable moments of Sparks history and as our employees walk around they can see themselves like on this wall at various events. That's pretty cool. Um, and one of the you know one of the things that's really cool about Sparks is being a hockey company we really do we we strive to hire hockey players where we can because yeah. if you understand the product it's so much easier to build the product and sell the product and represent the product and so you can see on here like some of the more crazy moments um here at sparks with like teams that we put together um and uh you know events that we go we go to pond hockey tournaments we go to a lot of hockey tournaments i'm going to be coming to the next pond hockey tournament for you're, sure. you're invited we got a spot for you this guy over here looks real familiar yeah yeah, yeah. he might actually be holding the camera right yeah, now that's cool and he's quite the hockey player so i think he actually had two of the first three goals in that game fair play look at that pretty pretty solid pretty yeah. solid yeah multifaceted yeah and this is like this is this was a customer appreciation dinner we put on where we rented a box at the bruins oh, and we brought the customer um some of these things, like this is a dinner with some NHL equipment managers. Yeah. This is a dinner out at Let's Play Hockey. This is the equipment manager show um, that was out in Arizona this year. Lots of different hikes and events that we do. Actually, what's another cool thing about this wall is we actually celebrate how Sparks survived the, the COVID pandemic. And we actually converted the entire company into making shields. Uh, for um, that's cool. first responders and, and healthcare providers and schools and funeral homes. And so for, you know, it was almost a year, this company basically shut down hockey and we were making, you know, medical products. Um, and so this celebrates some of that journey. These were the Zoom meetings. This was my daughter actually working at home on some of the components that we were making. And then that's really cool. this is a nurse that sent us a thank you um, via social media. So that's epic. So on this side, a little bit of finance, uh -huh. engineering, quality, and sourcing and procurement is on this side of the office. Mm -hmm. um, this, you know, again, engineering was such a critical part of getting to the next step where we're now moving into production. Yeah. And so the engineers design it, sourcing people, find the suppliers and manage the relationships. And then we bring the components in to the, to the warehouse production area where we actually build the products for the customer. Oh, yeah. um, That's, that looks sick. Yeah, so one of the first things that you're gonna see here is, is a robot that we use to handle the programming of all the grinding rings yeah. uh, for the customers. And the reason why we use the robot is because the number of grinding rings we produce now, it, it, it's a very, very large number. And this critical component, which is making sure that every grinding ring is programmed and when put on a sharpener, will read the appropriate number of cycles and will be consistent and reliable for the customer. Again, the, the customers that we serve are all the way from the NHL down to, you know, homeowners and parents and kids. And this part, just making sure that every ring is consistent and reliable is really important. So by using robotics, we're able to ensure that. Fair play. Are you able to share any insight into how many rings you guys are producing currently? It's it's hundreds and hundreds of thousands okay. of rings per year, and and every single ring in the world is produced right here in Acton, Massachusetts. That's not something that I would imagine. Like yeah. I said, you just assume that there's a warehouse in the U.S. and you guys just push the product out to customers yeah. once they've ordered. But I didn't know you guys were making stuff here in the office that the guys are based out. It's yeah. it's nuts to see that. So it's really important to handle production of certain aspects of our product here in the United States. Mm -hmm. In the case of the grinding ring, we inspect it so many times along the life of producing the grinding ring, which we'll see in a second, that it really didn't make sense to bring that grinding ring to anywhere else to produce it because it keeps having to come back to a QC step, a quality control step. So yeah. we want to control that. And some of our accessories, the our ability to make new accessories and get even small volumes of those accessories out is reliant on us being the producer. If we tried to use a third party um, producer, like a contract manufacturer, the volumes just aren't there and the startup cycles are way too long with a contract manufacturer. So making it here in the United States gives us high quality and allows us to be incredibly flexible and nimble, even with low volume production. Cool. So we're gonna move from here into this is this is sort of the heart of production here in the United States where we actually make the grinding rings. Yeah. So we have raw materials that come in from our machinists that make the raw grinding ring, which is just basically a machined piece of steel. Yep. That steel then, before it ever becomes an, an abrasive product that can grind the hollow, 
actually has to be inspected on, on one of these machines. Now these are custom built machines by our engineers, software designers, optics engineers. What these machines are able to do is to take a grinding ring, which has a hollow shape ground into it, mm -hmm. which is very hard to measure. You can't get calipers on there. There's a thing called a, like a shadow box, which is a very old school way of inspecting uh, parts, you know, 50, 60 years ago. Yeah. Um, because the, the, the arc of this ring isn't happening on a flat surface, it's happening, you know, 20 millimeters off of any edge. It's really hard to measure this radius. And so we invented this QC step, we call this the Omnix. And what this does is you put a ring into this system and then it shines light and a camera takes a picture and then all of the software scribes onto the surface the, the arc that's on the ring and then inspects that ring against all of the parameters that are associated with that one specific radius of hollow. So yeah. we have a different program for every radius of hollow, every fire ring we produce. This ring is inspected three times in its life. It's inspected at, the, at where, where these are produced, the raw ring, it's inspected here when we receive it. We send it out, have abrasive put on it, and we inspect it yet again, just for dimensional accuracy. How, so the abrasive, that's what actually comes into contact with the skate blade, exactly. sharpens it. Yep. How, does, how does that process of applying it onto the ring happen? That is, that is a super secret process which we cannot tell you. Okay, perfect. We'd have to kill you if we told you. <laughs> but that's some of the magic of Sparks, is putting that abrasive on there yeah. in a very consistent manner. All of this technology inspects it to make sure that it meets our specifications. Again, because this ring could wind up on an NHL player's skate or, you know, in little Johnny or Susie's garage for their parents that are sharpening their skates. Yeah. So there's, there's one thing that I've got to say, is it okay if I pick one of these up? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I think any, anyone that owns a Sparks machine would see this and lose their mind. <laughs> I've never seen so many 5.8 wheels in my life. Yeah. That's unbelievable. So that, that right there is 25 rings. Yeah. Every lot that we produce is 50 rings. So it's two of those trays. Please. So. Um, and we'll talk about, and the reason why I pointed that out is we'll talk about lots when we get into the testing, which actually happens, we do some sample testing. So every, every ring is measured multiple times. Every ring in the world ever produced at Sparks is measured multiple times along the process to make sure it's dimensionally accurate. And we'll see further on in, the, in our tour, there's a spot where we actually test the rings to make sure every lot of rings is perfect. Um, down in this area of manufacturing is the storage of all of the packaging for the rings. So it's, you don't think about it, but when you design a product, you actually have to design the packaging. So we've designed all the packaging and this is where we inventory it. We also have down here, our cage. We actually have multiple of these cages on site where we store the grinding rings. Because again, we're making hundreds and hundreds of thousands of these. As we produce them, we yeah. store them in cages. It's like our little vaults. Jeez. And you'll see another vault on the other side of the office. I imagine based on the unit numbers that you're making these, quite a serious amount of money of, of rings yeah, here. It is. It's, yeah. Again, another thing you don't think about is like, oh wow, we're going to accumulate. Even just seeing what's on the table there, that is yeah. nuts. I yeah. know, like a lot of the guys that I skate with have, have sports machines and they'll be getting mad to see all of this stock yeah. just sitting around. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's, it's really, it's cool to see it. Yeah, it's sure, curious. sure. Um, so where we're going now, so we're leaving the grinding ring production area, uh -huh. going back out into where the rings are programmed. So after they are measured, plated, measured, assembled, they actually come out here, an assembled grinding ring gets, gets put onto this robot. The robot pulls it out of the tray. You can see it right here. It'll grab it, it'll bring it over to the programmer. It programs it, and then it runs it through two checks. It simulates it being in a sharpener. So after it programs it, it goes, okay, now I'm a sharpener. How many cycles do I have loaded on me? And it checks it, and then it checks it again, just to make sure, without a doubt, that, that ring is programmed, and programmed properly. So the ring not only knows how many cycles, the ring knows what size it is as well. And it has serial numbers and a whole bunch of other cool things stored on the ring. Are these are the elements that you don't think about, because of course um, I've seen and interacted with other skate shoppers before. And seeing that the actual ring itself isn't just a tool like a screwdriver, yeah. it has its own brain and it has a way of communicating with the machine and being able to be read. That's the type of stuff that you don't really appreciate yep. when you're using it. Because I think one of the beautiful things about the Sparks machine and also the accessories that you have is it's so simple to use it 
It's only when you come to this facility and look at how everything works that you realize how complex yeah. everything is. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I think a staple of a good product is when you make something incredibly complicated seem yeah. very easy to use. Yeah. So it's it's just it's crazy to see all of this. You have, I think the audience as well. You don't have any indication into how many people are working here to make everything happen. Yeah. And then how complex everything is, yeah. and how simple you make it seem when you get a product at home as a as a user. Yeah. And just get to use it and, and make your life easier. Another interesting thing when you said that it made yeah. me think of. When we created this ring in probably 2015 was when we came up with the idea for the grinding ring and the, and the memory storage on it to store information like the Radius Apollo, the cycles, serial numbers, error codes, everything is stored on the ring. That at the time was a lot of work that to put all of that intelligence into the ring and engineer that, yeah. that we didn't harvest until the Gen 3 Sharpener. Sharpener 3 is finally actually harvesting a lot of that information and we'll see that when you get to see the new product. That's so cool. The technology and the stuff we were storing on the ring for seven years is now getting pulled and and presented to the customer. That's that's and the users. That is so cool. Here and we'll just do this quick, but like so we are an engineer founded company. I'm a mechanical engineer, came up with Sparks. All through my career I've been in companies where it, it would be very difficult to purchase very expensive development level um, equipment, right? Yeah. So this this is called a fiber laser, and we use this fiber laser to engrave stainless steel. And originally, the whole concept was being able to do customizable steel, but we now actually use the fiber laser uh, and the CO2 laser for engineering reasons. So we make fixtures and we make prototypes on these lasers, and we also do production. And so something that I think is maybe interesting to the audience out there is that this is this is our deburring block set. And again, you might think this is like made in some far off land and shipped to the United States. This is hardwood, this is cherry coming from North Carolina that we have a supplier that sends us these wooden samples, all machined. Uh, and we bring these in here and we do all of the laser engraving of the Sparks logo right here on that CO2 laser. Uh, and then we do the packaging, we do the assembly of the, the, the scotch pad and the, and the leather. All that's done right here on these tables for every one of these deburring box sets that's made amazing. for the world. In this area here, um, we have the QC department. Okay. Um, and so this area both is used by R&D to investigate various aspects of the sharpener and the grinding rings and blades that we've sharpened, as well as to look at components. And so one of our newest products is Beam, which we'll talk about, but these are all of the Beam frames in here in the QC area for us to inspect them to make sure everything is meeting the specs of the, of the print. So we'll, we'll talk about this in more depth later, but this, this is where we use technology, really expensive tools like microscopes, blade scan. We use this to uncover things that are, are beyond the naked eye. It's much too small to see, but those discoveries are pulled into the R&D process to help, so help us evolve the product and improve the product. It's, it's, a, it's, it's so much more complex than what meets the eye when you look at what you guys push to, to the customers. Yeah. You look at the website and you don't have any indication of how in depth everything goes. Yeah. Yeah. It's So this blade scan machine actually, this is a good segue to Beam, which is our latest product. Yeah. But blade scan is a technology we acquired almost two years ago and the accuracy of that machine we often talk about this, the sheets of paper right so um, how thick is how one thousandth of an inch is one third the thickness of a sheet of paper which is how a traditional edge checker people try to keep things within about a thousandth of an inch third the thickness of a sheet of paper that can measure down to the resolution of one two hundredth the thickness of a sheet of paper and so that can measure the hollow, the curvature, that level. And the technology that came out of that, one aspect of that technology is now incorporated in Beam. So this, this is a new product, it's a new product category. We'll talk about this in depth when we go into the products. But because this is a product that's never existed, it uses high, really high precision lasers, high precision sensors. There was no place in the world that we could easily outsource this to a contract manufacturer. So we, we've we designed every aspect of it and we manufacture every aspect of this product right in this in this area here. 
And another interesting thing is we had to design not only the product, but we had to design the manufacturing equipment. And so this would normally be, be produced in a clean room to have these lasers and lenses and sensors and all of these really high precision things that can't get even a, an ounce of dust on with a fingerprint. I mean, this all would have to be done in a clean room. And what we did was we built these mini clean rooms. And so we have three mini clean rooms in here that all have positive air pressure flowing in them to keep all of the dust out of the manufacturing area. And you can see in here where we make the inside of this cell, we have robotic gluing machines that actually precision locate glue to seal the lenses and the lasers to make sure there's no dust, no humidity that gets inside the inner workings of beam when it's in the environment. And so everything in here was custom built to make beam. It's, it's a laboratory, basically. Basically. So it's unreal. Yeah. So you can see the team here. We're just getting kick, kicked off making beam now at volume. So in and around here are all the, the assembly of all of our different accessories are, are scattered throughout the rest of the warehouse. In the middle of the warehouse and production of beam is our repair center. So. In North America, any machines or accessories that need to be repaired are repaired by this team. This team repairs everything from the NHL down to the average consumer. This team has uh, a monitor that puts up as a repair, as a, as, a, as a customer service call, email, live chat comes in. There's a database that's linked between this team and the customer service team. And as soon as a, a case gets created, it shows up on that screen that's above this repair center and they are waiting some machines they're waiting for them to come in some machines are already here and that database tracks the movement of that sharpener through our system so if you were based in north america and your machine has ever been serviced with a bit this box it's done with this team that's that's insane and the nice thing about that is this team is 50 feet away from r d and 10 feet away from production and so the r d production and repair is intimately connected. And so if something comes in that we've never seen before, the R&D knows about it in 10 minutes and repair is sharing the findings of that investigation. And it's either something that can be explained, it's something that needs further investigation. Either way, it's something that we're gonna try to repair out of future products. So we're gonna try to design the product to not have that failure mode again. Cool. Next bit. This Next like, bit. This is the um, engineering? Engineering, so more okay. engineering. So this is go. where software, mechanical engineering, it's it's a, it's it's less office and more like lab, working tech. lab. Yeah, tech. So we have the products in here. We have, you can see there's some programming going on here. That's actually some beam programming right there. Um, and you can see uh, Joe and Manasa over there doing some programming. And you could see, you know, you're, you're seeing the creation of the products right here. So this is, well, you know, as we walk past these things, this is the some of the early development work on the tablet that's going to be on the Pro Sharpener 3. So Pro Sharpener 3 has a tablet on it. So it's more for like uh, commercial use. Commercial use. Commercial and team. Got you. And then you can see here some of the early testing on beams, this little beam army here. Some of these, these are some of the first beams that existed in the world. Are these going to end up with customers or no, this is all just engineering jeez it makes me want to grab one i'm not gonna lie yeah yeah i'll make we'll fuck you up there we go there we go so oh, these are all the toys are. yeah this is where all the toys are so we have some inspection stuff here yeah. uh, we actually have a digital microscope that we use to investigate grinding rings as well huh? so here inside here is the r d shop okay and so this is where we get to tinker so this is where the cnc mill is so this is this gives us the ability to machine machine metal. So if we're doing prototypes and we want to make metal prototypes, we do yeah. that on the CNC mill. If we want to use the 3D printers, they're there. They're all networked. So we can actually sit in CAD, design a part, pull up the 3D printer, and actually send that product right to the 3D printer and watch the print on a camera on our computers at That's our desks. Cool. So the the advent of 3D printing really did make Sparks a possibility. I said that. Like as we were kind of building this, this company, it was you know the the universal availability of CAD and 3D printing has really like that, that's why Sparks didn't exist. People ask me like, oh, why didn't somebody do this 50 years ago? Yeah. It's because these design the design tools and the ability to produce things very quickly for the average engineer 
it's, it's just so easy that it, it, it facilitated us innovating Sparks. Got you. So, this is cool. Tool chest, you can see you know, here's a bunch of Sparks machines oh, torn apart. So this is Sparks Sharpener 3. Yeah. You know, both the, the, the um, pro base as well as the consumer. And you can see these were all developmental units where you can see into the inner workings here, the boards and the power supplies and everything on the inside. So every, every sharpener that we release has probably 50 sharpeners built in the, in the production of that product. Jeez. And they're used for both, both development and, and testing. I think what's real, really painful to see is again, uh, is all of this, like the skeletons of the product that I enjoy yeah. using. And it's like, will this ever become anything? And it's like, no, it's just for testing. And it's just for that's testing. painful. Yeah. That's so painful. But I suppose you get, you get used to it. Yeah. Yes. So here's more production. This is where all our pro bases are produced. Again, probably surprises people to know that like every pro base in the world was made right here. I didn't see any of that. Yeah. That's, that is cool. So again, all American made too. Like the, those are, that sheet metal is sourced out of New Jersey. So as we move here, we're moving past shipping and we're, we're going into the area. We, I talked about this a little bit before where when we produce grinding rings, and I'm speaking up a little bit, uh, when we produce grinding rings, we produce them in lots of 50. Every lot of 50 has a sample pulled out of it where it is actually run on a sharpener on skate steel because the ring is checked again three times dimensionally. It's visibly inspected, but we'll only know if that ring is perfect if we run it on skate steel and make sure that it sounds really, really smooth. One of the characteristics of Sparks is that smooth sound as it grinds down the skate blade. You don't want any chatter. You don't want any unusual sounding behavior. And so every lot gets multiple rings pulled out of it, run on these machines to make sure they sound good. Not for very long, but just and these, the engineers, the technicians, sorry, that work in this room, they're like finely tuned machines. They can hear it and they go through training where we actually have rings that don't sound good. And we share that sound with them and they get trained on what sounds right. And so, again, every lock. That's nuts. That is nuts. I've just got to grab one of these. Um, so this is, yeah, so this is custom made steel just for this process. So we work with a steel provider and we have a Sparks test steel. And so we buy pallets and pallets and pallets of steel that looks just like this. You can see there's no features to put into the skate blade. The reason why is because it never goes in a skate blade and you can nest, you can nest them much tighter when you're yeah. producing them. If you don't have features on them. So you can imagine when these are made, they're able to nest a ton. You can get more out of the same sheet of steel. Yep. Quite. We go through so much of that stuff. Sure. Something else that you wouldn't think. Like you think it's just buy, hold, ship out. Yeah. But it's like the research and development, the customer service, the repairs, the servicing, and also the testing and quality control, all done yep. in the same place. It's crazy. You see here even things like this you don't you don't expect from them, but like this is our air handler yeah. that manages all the dust collection for the office. because um, we do a lot of sharpening here, so want to make sure the air's clean. This is this is our the original loading dock for Sparks. We actually have another loading dock now, um, which we'll, I think we'll see in a little bit. Um, but this was the original container of Sparks machines came in through this door, um, and I got I actually got a pair of bolt cutters and cut every container when it comes from a container ship has a like a seal, and I have a picture in the office of me cutting that seal off that first container, probably for the first until maybe in the last couple of years, every single container of Sparks machines was unloaded by us. That's cool. Yeah, it was really, it was like a company event when a container would come in. I'm guessing now there's probably too many units for you guys to yeah. do it yourself. Yeah, so now we have three different distribution locations. We yeah. have uh, Indianapolis uh, and all of our containers of sharpeners go there direct. We have uh, Ontario and we have the Netherlands. And so Close containers, to closer to you. Yeah, yeah. So containers move uh, from our contract manufacturer of the sharpener to those three locations and don't come through here. Cool. So now we'll go into the marketing, uh, graphic design and video production office for Sparks. An interesting tidbit about this room is that this is actually the, in the facility that we're in now where we have 20,000 square feet, this room, 
which is probably like 30 by 30 or so, was the, the first office of Sparks ever. Um, right in this area, we actually built all of the Kickstarter machines um, for the Let's Play Hockey event that we first demoed Sparks at. Those were all built here. That's where I first learned about the product. I saw it on Kickstarter and I was like, what the hell? Yeah, so there was eight people in this room for two years um, trying to get that product onto Kickstarter. That's cool. So marketing, sourcing, engineering were all in this room. Um, but now it houses, like I said, graphic design and video production. That's cool. So this is where we, this big table in the middle is where we review all of the proofs and posters that we make and uh, packaging and you know stand up meetings around uh, the production of all of the collateral for Sparks. Make sure it all looks cool. Yeah. Yeah. So now we can move on to a part of the facility here where we do our video production mm -hmm. and we actually have storage for some of the products that are produced here but haven't yet made it to the distribution locations. Okay. okay. So as we produce products, they have to accumulate somewhere. Um, and so we'll take a walk there. Sounds good. What happens on, on, I've not actually seen this side of the building, what's on this side? So this is actually, we're expanding into this space. So this is a new, this is another, this is the, like 5,000 of our square feet is actually a new office that um, the teams are gonna expand into because we've, kind of, we've, we've outgrown the space that we're in right now. And so that's in that one area and across the hall from there is another room that stores all of the raw materials to make beam. Okay. So all that product has to go somewhere and we have to keep that close to those controlled environment areas. Mm -hmm. And so all of the housings, all of those frames, I mean, there's hundreds of components in that one little beam unit and they're all stored in that room. So large, it's, it's, it's a much more significant operation than what you would initially assume. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we, I, when we were first in that room, which is probably, um, you know, 900 square feet or something like that, yeah. I never thought we'd be 20,000 square feet and 50 employees. Occupying more than one building as well. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's exactly. amazing. One of the important aspects of having a direct-to-consumer brand is controlling your content. And so we have in-house videography, we actually have an in-house video studio. Um, for years, we would always be like setting up and then tearing down and setting up and tearing down. And it was important for us to build this. So if you've ever seen any of our Sparks videos, they're, they're, a lot of them are shot right here in this area. Um, we have, you can see there's a, there's a rail system so we can drag in green screen, we can put a white backdrop, we can pull the backdrops away and have slat walls so we can make it look like it's a, it's a store or a place with stuff up on the wall. We can put in monitors. So a lot of our conversations that we've had with our customers happen right here. That's really cool. Uh, this is one of those elements that a lot of uh, manufacturers don't think is a requirement. Yep. But in this digital age, this is one of the most valuable things that a company can have yep. to be able to control the, the message and the media that they put out. So this is a really, really big deal. And it's, it's, it, it's not immediately obvious, but we, we want to keep it here in this, in this warehouse. This is a little bit farther away from where most of the activity is because we need it to be quiet all the time. And so oftentimes when we're in here, we're shooting, we're like, oh, did the air conditioner just turn on? Oh geez, go turn the air conditioner off. So, I, I, that's a similar problem for me as well. Yep, yeah. so important part. And then again, it's back here, it's quiet, and this is where we store overflow. So this is these are things that we produce. These are the pro bases. Remember we talked about in the other facility that all the pro bases are made here? This is the accumulation of the pro bases. These will eventually move on to our distribution partners as needed. The scale is just unreal. So much stuff. This is this is a, a more substantial loading dock for us. So uh, this is a, you know trailer height. So trailers can come in here. You don't actually have to climb up on ladders to get stuff out of uh, you know eighteen wheelers. So yeah. trailers can come in here and we can unload them. Typically, we'll unload the eighteen wheelers into this facility and then we'll we'll dole out or distribute out those raw materials to the other location, which is just around the corner. Um, and this happens to be where our other cage is. Jeez. So as we build and manufacture grinding rings, those grinding rings have to go somewhere before they go out to our distribution partners. Yeah. Those are all stored here in this in this second cage. Just just a couple. Yeah, there's each one of these, I believe, is 50 rings. Jeez. Every one of these boxes. And there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of boxes in here, so. It's a lot of stock. So one of those boxes that'd be good for probably about a couple of years. Yeah. Yeah. 
some of our commercial partners will be, you know, they'll go through more than 10 of those boxes a season, so. Jeez. Yeah. And there's also uh, units of um, the actual sharpeners yep. as well. Sharpeners themselves, more pro bases. These might even be cases. Yeah, these are cases. Oh, the sack Carrying backpacks. cases, the backpacks. Those are sick, I like those. This is foam. So it's one that you don't think about, but like all of the foam that goes into the packaging or into the travel cases, the hard cases, that foam is, is huge. And so when we bring in the foam, we have to store that somewhere as well. That's unbelievable. This has been incredibly insightful. This is our, uh, this is our handy dandy um, expo box. So this is, this is when we go to Let's Play Hockey or we go to the Professional Hockey Equipment Manager Show. This is where we load in all the sharpeners and the backdrops and everything. And this travels around and meets us at the various locations. That is really cool. That is really, really cool. So that, 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 that completes the tour of the Sparks HQ. And there's just a lot you just don't think about when you're you know, looking at these companies online. And I mean, I've been using your product for over six years and you just don't understand the scale of everything that goes on here until you actually come here. So hopefully the guys watching at home get a bit of insight into the operations, what you guys actually do behind the scenes. Sure. Of course, more importantly, what's coming next. Yeah. But yeah, no, this has been epic. I really appreciate you. I'm glad you came too, because we, We've not done a great job in sharing the, the building of Sparks and like the behind the scenes. Yeah. And so it's cool to have you here to kind of tour you around and show everybody out there what we're doing here. I appreciate that. Thank you, man. Awesome. Thanks, appreciate Chris. It.